Hello world, this is Craig. In part five, we're going to finish up the DS2502 E48, look at a few things in the cut sheet that are worth detailed consideration. This is an example of why it's important to read the data sheets when you're trying to use one of these devices. You can see here that it says the bus master must first provide one of the six ROM function commands. After a ROM function command is successfully executed, the memory functions that operate on the EEPROM portions become accessible. In other words, you can see in our code where we first read the ROM, where we got the MAC address, and then we read the EEPROM. If we didn't do the first part where we read the ROM first or do some kind of a ROM function, we cannot read the EEPROM. And that's another part of the error checking. The device wants to make sure that we can successfully manipulate the ROM before it allows us to do anything in the EEPROM, which could include a, a write. Finally, since it's so important, I wanted to talk about calculating the CRC. Okay, well, I'm not sure that that deserved its own video, but uh, that finishes up the DS2502 E48. Really, a lot of the stuff on that, that chip was in part four for the C code. So at any rate, that's it for part five. The last part, we're going to focus uh, just on the CRC, and uh, that's an exciting one. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope that you found it useful. Bye-bye.